Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're talking about something that's been a long time coming. Now, it's been over two years since Unreal Engine 5 was first released into early access, and in that time we've seen some really awesome projects prototyped and shipped and released. First from indie devs that were just experimenting with tools and making small projects, and then more recently from larger game studios that are really showing what the tools are capable of. It turns out that when properly used, these tools can be really powerful augmentations to a game development workflow, used in the right ways, of course. But this entire time, for me as a VR game developer, I've been wanting to get in on the action. And although I've been able to have a go, experiment around, it's never been properly fully supported to get Nanites working in VR. That is until Unreal Engine 5.3 released a couple of months ago. Now, let's be real, I'm slightly late to the party with this one. There are a few cool videos already showing what VR can be done with Unreal Engine 5.3. But that's not going to stop me because we are planning to use this new workflow to ship a commercial VR game. Plus, I've just been itching to go nuts and build some really cool stuff that I've always dreamed of in VR. So I dug out an old city that I built in, I think around 2019 or so, for very much an Unreal Engine 4 VR workflow. This city was designed to be a backdrop, not explorable by foot. It was meant to look really cool as a kind of slightly futuristic sci-fi Martian city. And we're going to upgrade it to Nanite spec today. Also, we're going to be using a 2090. So that's got approximately the same processing power as a PS5. So that means no 4090s, no path tracing or Lumen or crazy next-gen stuff. This is more what Nanite could look like for today's VR games. So when I exhumed the project from the archives of an old, slightly unused computer, I first received it in its old format. It looks fine, it's got some fog, it's fairly nice. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these assets and upgrade pretty much everything to Nanite, including the landscape. We'll also be using GPU light mass instead of the old-fashioned light mass. It's got a far, far nicer quality, and it renders a lot more quickly. I'd say for anyone using light mass at the moment for baked lighting in a game, GPU light mass is, for me, the way to go, despite having maybe one or two bugs that you still need to work around. But they're very surmountable. And to sweeten the visuals a tiny bit more, let's throw in some Megascans mountains to surround the landscape. That old-fashioned landscape was just looking a little bit basic, I think. We'll provide a very gentle rebuild and remaster of the lighting, just giving slightly richer shadows and more contrast in the silhouettes of the buildings. And that's good to go. Now, let's work up a couple more levels. Let's build a nighttime level as well in a kind of slightly dusky alien environment. I think that'll look pretty cool. We'll take some elongated point lights and we will scatter them throughout the city streets to make it look like it's being uplit and lived in and glowing. And let's make sure we've thrown in some volumetric clouds as well to give a bit more detail and richness to the sky. And now, finally, let's build a technical approximation of the kind of level that I would have wanted to see five years ago when VR was first starting to pick up a bit. Let's just make a really, really big city. So in the interest of time, all I'll do is I'll take the core city and I'll copy it over a bunch of times and just throw it everywhere, haphazardly. I'll use a few of those mountains to hide the worst of the offences I've made in terms of sticking out and floating buildings. But really the point of this is more just to have a really big city and see how it runs. And now, let's get that lighting baked. And to be honest, we're basically done. This is a really fast project. What I'll do is I'll take one of my basic VR classes throw it in and get the entire thing built out and let's see how it feels. Okay, so let's hop in. So I'm running this on my Quest 3, which is a really, really nice upgraded headset, by the way, compared to the Quest 2. Running at full resolution and yeah, it feels awesome. It feels crisp, it feels sharp, and the city has a really nice sense of scale and depth that I think is elevated slightly by the clearer lenses in the Quest 3. This isn't a sponsor, by the way. It's just quite a well-made headset. Now, of course, we all know that the uh, headset that really keeps me up at night is the uh, new hypothetical, maybe existing Valve Deckard. So let's switch over to the observation tower and jump over to the window. Now, I really thought I was moving my head very slowly to give sweeping panoramic shots. 
but it turns out that even this is too fast. So I might slow some of the footage down to half speed just so you can get a look at things a bit more clearly. My first takeaways are A, it looks really, really cool. The shapes are nice, the uh, detail's quite nice. But I would also say that for the mid ground, the city immediately outside the window, it needs more detail. The textures in the building need more detail, the windows need a lot more detail, and where the buildings touch the ground, the streets need a lot more detail as well. Maybe this was okay for a 2019 project. But if I was gonna go for PC VR in this day and age, I would do a fair amount more work to the buildings immediately, visible outside the window. Either way, let's jump over to the night scene and go for a little bit of a music change while we're at it. For me, there's something so magical about cities at night. They feel so alive. Millions of tiny lights telling the stories of millions of not so tiny people. And with the far off dim sun of some alien star washing over this dark city, I thought the effect really came together quite well and it looks really nice. Again, I'd love to see a little bit more detail, but uh, for a project I made in 2019, I'm very happy with it. Now, so far I've been talking about how this feels. How's it running? Well, it's running really nicely. I'm running my Quest at a native 90. This is full resolution for the Quest 3, so that's approximately 4K and it's running smoothly and beautifully. Now, if I needed to pull this off without Nanite, there are definitely a lot of intelligent ways you could do it. You could have all of the further away assets being clustered together with lower resolution textures and light bakes. But in this case, I just threw everything in and it worked. And that's one of the liberating powers and promises of Nanite is it's faster for artists and designers to iterate. It's another tool in the tool belt of artists to just make games. But when it itself is used intelligently, it's a great way to get a lot of extra detail in, a lot of extra resolution in the world that you're crafting. And in the full commercially shipped project we're using, it's less about massive megacities and more about a rich and subtle texture to all of the objects and architecture that you'll be interacting with. Just another notch in the belt of fidelity that some world builders try to go for. But of course, let's be real. This tech is also really awesome for just simulating giant colossal megacities. So let's jump over to the big one, the one where we, I think approximately 8x the number of buildings in the level and just made everything massive. Now for this one, I put us on top of a platform overlooking the city. And for the most part, it was holding still at 90 FPS with just a little bit more crunch. Now that's interesting to me and I'm gonna look into more detail about why that is. Don't forget that night is not just free frames, especially when you're doing things like baked lighting and lots of detailed textures, but it's certainly a way to make building complex worlds a lot easier. And I've got to say, rendered in the full clarity of the Quest 3's pancake lenses, this was a really breathtaking view. It felt like being up in Hong Kong overlooking the city or on top of some tall tower. And at some point in the future, I'm gonna to have to do something with this to tell some kind of richer story. But let's tie a bow around this. Nanite now works for PC VR for Unreal Engine 5. That is awesome. I've been waiting for this for a long time coming and in the commercial projects that we'll announce when we're ready, it's already feeling really, really nice. And with that, I'll sign off and get back to work. I'll try to post a bit more regularly in the future. It's been a really busy few months, but I should be able to think a bit more about cool kinds of content that I could make on this channel. So leave a comment if there's anything that you want to see, anything that you want to know, and maybe I'll be able to get to it. But until then, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care.